All right. So uh, the story of the uh, uh, the level continues here. So this is a level I I showed the, the yeah I think I showed this a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's a stare at uh, one ninety one ninety nine uh, one ninety nine uh, precision level, and uh, this is the one that has the uh, the cool calibrators marks uh, on the vial in there, which is kind of neat. Uh, but it has some problems in that. It's top Bakelite or phenolic uh, uh, thermal isolator is blasted away here, okay? So actually a viewer uh, um, suggested that uh, it might be, might be cool to uh, make a mold of, uh, of the good end and then, you know, uh, a silicone mold and then slip that over here and then recast the, uh, the broken away part, right? And I was like, oh, hey, that might make a a neat little series uh, to repair this level. <laughs> I got a level problem. So uh, so anyway, I thought that was a great idea. So I started researching uh, uh, some materials that I could use to cast that. And uh, now there's a problem getting the right quantity and uh, you know, they're not cheap, these materials, right? So um, just the, I found finally somebody that has a, a small quantity of it. It's about thirty dollars for a, a two-part setup, and then you got to buy the silicone and etc. Well, on a whim, I decided to call Starrett and say, "Hey, can you still buy? Can you buy this part? And how much is it?" Right? Well, guess what? I I bought one. So this is this is twenty-nine bucks. Okay, so it's less than the it's less than the. Um, the urethane to cast this and the silicone and all that stuff, which is going to be probably a hundred bucks by the time you're all done with it. And uh, so I bought a, uh, I bought the replacement part. Sorry, sorry to disappoint guys, but there it is. And, uh, and it fits fine. Um, and it is made out of phenolic, believe it or not. It's not a, it's not a urethane or anything like that. And then here's the homage to uh, uh, the metric system here. They've changed the, uh, um, they've changed the top plate just a little bit, right? So one division is five tenths of an inch per foot, or four hundredths of a millimeter per meter. Okay. Um, now, here's here's something that I think is actually kind of funny. Uh, you know, we talked about machining phenolic and uh, how it wants to chip and break and uh, do all kinds of obnoxious stuff. Well, guess what? Our friends at Starrett had some problems. Um, look at that. They, uh, they pushed that drill through there a little too hard pew, and blew that material out. This is why I know it's phenolic now, as I can see it. Um, and then where they threaded this hole, there's some, some crispy critters and fracturing around that. And, uh, you know, that thread doesn't look too, uh, too awesome in there, but the top is uh, acceptable. So anyway, so there's our new top plate for that. And then uh, the only thing left on this is to... Uh, uh, repaint under the vial and then um, uh, take care of this bottom and rescrape this bottom here and, and lap it and get it all get the sole of this uh, in good shape. Uh, these come actually uh, from the factory they're scraped from the factory in fact you can just barely see some of the marks left uh, from the scraping but this one's seen a lot of use I think and uh, uh, needs to be rescraped so anyway that'll be a future video but we got a new top for that and uh, um, for our 1944, 47, 49, or 47 or 49, it's hard to read the guy's digits there, 44, 1944, our 1944 Starrett uh, 199 level. All right, so this next one here, this is this uh, photograph my wife gave me for my birthday. <clears throat> it's uh, pretty cool, I like it. Um, I collect old photographs, and uh, she found this one on, on eBay, and uh, it's an original photograph, it's not a copy. Um, don't really know how old it is, um, hard to tell, and, uh, but it's really nice. Um, it's just kind of neat, the, the look on his face, and uh, it's like, all right, hurry up, take the picture, I'm busy. <laughs> Probably his wife, she's into photography, and she decided to take his picture or something like that so he's just wanted to get back to work um you can see the 
There's a sledgehammer over here, so I think he has an assistant that may be off camera. Uh, he has a striker maybe that uh, uh, is helping him out. Anyway, it's just kind of a neat, neat, uh, a neat picture. You get a sense of uh, um, this guy's workspace and uh, um, his environment. You know, it's kind of cool. You can see the Japanese style hammer there. They uh, uh, they typically have this big offset to them like that. A uh, little different different style there. So anyway, pretty cool. And uh, that was my uh, my birthday present there for my wife. So pretty neat. Okay, so I recently changed the belt on this uh, on my belt sander here, and um, I had. Uh, you can't you can't read it anymore at least not on camera but I can just barely read it when I put the the belt that I removed off of here on I, I marked the date down uh, when I put that on right and um, you know I didn't really think about it until now when I changed the belt uh, how long that particular belt had been on there right so this is the belt that was on there and it actually still works but for what I was what I wanted to do it just wasn't quite uh, you know, it's still got some good life out on the uh, on the edges here, but I needed a broad surface that was cutting. Oop, that's not good. Um, a broad surface that was cutting uniformly, right? Okay. So this thing has been on there since 7, 12, 14. So this has been on there a couple of years, and uh, so the reason I'm showing you this is because I've I've mentioned it before. Um, Cheap abrasives are false economy. You should buy the absolute best abrasives you can get your, your hands on. And don't pay attention to how much they cost uh, because they'll pay you back with life. And um, um, so this particular belt here is $26 from McMaster Car. Uh, and it's a Norton Blaze, uh, an SG Blaze. So it's a, it's a um, premium ceramic, um, uh, zirconia uh, belt so it's designed for long life and uh, to stay sharp for a long period of time anyway uh, uh, this is my new belt for you know until somebody else comes up with something uh, better and uh, now you know I'm not sanding all day every day but uh, um, I use this thing a fair amount uh, for a variety of materials from wood to stainless steel to you know whatever and uh, anyway so uh, Norton Blaze McMaster sells them under their premium ceramic uh, zirconia belt so uh, they don't list them as blaze um, so basically look for the most expensive one <laughs> and uh, 6 by 48 is 26 bucks or something like that so uh, anyway that's what you'll get all right this next one here this is another item I got uh, with my uh, horse trading session with the, the young lads. Uh, this one came from uh, Jeff Tiedekin, uh otherwise known as uh, Monkey Luck Likes Shiny. Um, this is his, uh, his little logo there. Uh, of course, he left some of these uh, floating around uh, in uh, conspicuous places. So, <laughs> uh, Anyway, this is a giant micrometer. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. We'll look at it in a second. But... One of the best parts of this thing is uh, is this little tag here. So let's take a quick look at that real quick. All right, so there's that tag I was telling you about. It's pretty neat, huh? Uh, property U.S. Navy, USN, blah, 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 serial number. But, you know, it's just neat to see some of this historical marking and stuff like that, and it establishes some kind of you know history to this thing you know so this was bought for the Navy. Uh, you know, they probably stopped using these kinds of tags and the you know, I don't know, 70s or something like that. So uh, maybe it predates that. Uh, we'll look at the micrometer. Maybe we can kind of um, visually date it a little bit uh, by looking at the mic too. Let's take a look at this thing. So this is a, it's a big tubular mic. Okay, oops. Announcing tubular micrometers. So, um... 4725. So I don't, yeah, I don't think that's a date. I don't think that's a date on there. Um, anyway, so it's got the little brochure with it. And um, so this is, it's an adjustable, uh, it's a 
a micrometer that has a range. This one is, is 24 to 30. Now, the only drag with this is it's miss, missing um, uh, all the anvils uh, to make it go from 24 up. It's got the 30 inch mandrel in it uh, up here, but it doesn't have uh, any of the others. Now, these aren't particularly difficult to make. It's a fairly simple little thing, right? Um, you know, the trick is obviously, uh, you know, getting the end of this lapped uh, parallel with the other one, but there's the missing parts are a very, you know, one inch increments of, uh, uh, of that style right there. Okay, so that's something that you could probably make uh, without a lot of trouble. Um, although, uh, uh, the priority of a project like that is uh, always the, uh, the difficult part. Now the box is a little a little crunchy, needs a little bit of help, and um, the end standards are here, uh, which is probably one of the more expensive things to replace here. Um, they got some problems though. There's a little bit of corrosion on the end, so uh, they may still be reasonably okay. Oh, you know, we were talking about those airy points too. This is very similar here too. Is you know, you support them uh, out out at these uh, on these thermal isolators here, and those are very close to the airy points, or the airy points are in the middle of those, and it keeps the ends parallel. Um, you know, when it's sitting on a table like that. Okay, um, and we talked about that a little while ago. What is that? Oh, some kind of. Thing. Anyway, uh, this it, the thing's tubular and it's like super lightweight, so it's hollow and uh, it's got this cool wrinkle finish on it, and uh, it's kind of neat. So right now it's uh, I don't know I would call it wall art right now, um, and uh, it's certainly fun to look at. It doesn't look like it's seen a lot of use. So Jeff, uh, happy to horse trade with you anytime, buddy. So uh, that was a good trade. All right, I think we're ready for the main event here. So what we got set up here, um, this is a little setup to, to test uh, friction stir welding. Um, a viewer who actually prefers to remain anonymous, actually is a local viewer, um, we talked a little bit on, uh, on email and he asked if I'd be interested in trying one of these out and I said, yeah, sure. Um, so he sent me the the actual welding tool here, which is this guy here, and this is high speed steel that uh, uh, has been machined or on the end with a uh, a ceramic insert, I think, uh, and a little projection pin has been left. And uh, so the idea here is um, we're gonna oops, drop it and break it off. Um, we're going to put this in the mill and we're going to spin this at you know fairly high speed and uh, we're going to plunge it into this material and what it does is it is it melts this material and and stirs it together basically uh, through frictional methods so what's neat about this particular method is uh, you can weld uh, alloys that are typically not weldable and more importantly, uh, they retain more of their um, uh, yield strength than uh, you would if you, say, TIG welded this or something. So if we, uh, this is 5052 here, if we TIG welded that, we'd actually have to derate it, um, the material yield strength, uh, uh, because of the weld. The weld softens a particular area there, so you really have to treat the whole thing as, as that particular um, yield strength as the weld, right? So um, anyway, uh, uh, what's neat about this is uh, it doesn't take any filler metal and uh, you retain uh, much more of the uh, basic strength of the, of the material. So we'll get it all set up here. There's the pin. Um, this is good for, according to the notes that he sent with it, uh, up to 1 16th thick material. I didn't have any 1 16th. This is... Uh, 90 I think here, so we're just going to try it on that and see how it works. I got it clamped down with a with a liner underneath it to keep it from sticking to that and just in case he mentions that in his note. So uh, I need to tip the head of the mill uh, one degree or one degree or so, one to three degrees in this direction here kind of uh, away from the direction of travel and get that set up and then uh, let's see if we can make a friction stir weld. All right, so we're gonna take this thing out of here for, for a minute. 
And then uh, what I'm going to do is, what am I going to do here? I'm going to extend the quill. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take that chuck out of there as well first. Let's do that first. Get that out of my way. Okay. Now I'm going to extend the quill and I'm going to use this to uh, help me set my, uh, my one degree here. It's not a it's not a critical dimension apparently um, it's just uh, desirable so it looks like there's some some tolerance to it we're just going to use a, uh, a a protractor here uh, let's do that and this is already set at uh, at one degree so, oh I see hey don't, don't squeeze it too hard mr. wizard <laughs> All right, and then what we'll do is we'll just run this up against the quill, like so, okay? Am I going the right way there? I need to go the other way, okay. Like that. Uh, get to it. All right, let's try moving this. Oop, wrong way. 50-50 uh, chance on these things. Uh, I've only been turning these for quite a, quite a few years, and uh, I always go backwards. Should just go the opposite way. that down yeah you just got to remember to set it back because that's you know such a small angle like that um, if, if you walk away and you you don't uh, remember to set that back it's, it's far enough to screw you up but uh, not far enough that it's really easy to see right that it's off all right hmm. so we got this in here so now what we're gonna do is uh, center up over the joint like so Let's see what that looks like that looks pretty good okay go down here we're gonna we're gonna travel from um, uh, right to left and uh, then the other parameter he says um, is that the shoulder here okay as we're touching let me point at that the shoulder as we're touching, that should be run a few thousands below the surface of the material. So uh, we're actually going to you know, start out here and then kind of dig in a little bit. So let me zero the quill here. Okay, I zeroed that. So I'll come down to that and then I'm going to, let's see, three thousands below the surface to be welded. Okay, so uh, we're going to touch off and then we're going to drive in three thousands and then, um, um, then we're going to travel. now. I calibrated the, uh, he said, uh, it says 10 inches per minute, but uh, it can be slower or faster. And so that's our traverse speed there. I kind of calibrated that at uh, 10 inches per minute. Um, and um, I don't know, let's see. Oh, and uh, RPM, uh, we're gonna run uh, 1200 RPM. And I checked that with the tachometer too because the scale on uh, the variable speed is a little, is typically a little dodgy. So, uh, I don't know, I think, I think we're ready here. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll clean this with a little alcohol first and then uh, we'll, try the, uh, we'll try the weld. I'll just scrub off any crud that's on the, uh, clean the tool as well. blow dry there okay let's see we kind of in the let's see I want the pin off of it at first I think okay like so I don't know what do you think let's go for it all right 
there's it's zero. All right, let's dig in a little. Oop. All right, first problem. All right, uh, the part shifted. All right, let me uh, lower that down, and then I'm gonna snarf on these clamps a little bit. All right, well, Mr. Wizard forgot to tighten up his little mini pallet clamps. <laughs> okay, so we'll reset. I I cranked those down. I reefed them up down. Uh, I reset my zero, so I think <laughs> I'm ready. Let's see what happens. All right, there's zero. Dig in a little bit. Something like that. Ooh. That is not behaving like I would expect it to at all. Alright, still got a pin. It's more like it's machining it than it is uh, melting it. Alright, what am I doing wrong here? So it looks like, if I had to guess here, I'm only seeing a track for the pin, so Maybe it sprung up. I didn't notice if it sprung up or not. So uh, okay, so I think I I think I figured out what's going on here. We're gonna try it again here. I did one just off to the side here, and I watched the coil DRO, and actually uh, there's considerable uh, axial force on this, so uh, it really wants to push up and uh, and out. And uh, but I can see this some of this material is actually flowing here. Uh, so it's kind of exciting. Um, so what I've done is uh, uh, I've pushed the tool up all the way into the uh, head and locked the quill there so that we're bucking against solid uh, a solid stop, and then we're gonna um, we're gonna go again. I may do one off to the side like this just to uh, um, just to try it and get it going, and then uh, then we'll try the weld. I don't have a bunch of well, I got another sample, so I should be able to do another one. So. Okay, so we're zeroed there, and uh, so I'm going to raise the knee three thousandths. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to come off. All right, we raise the knee, so theoretically that should touch. See what we got here? Yep. I'm going to go a little slower on the feed rate. All right, let's hit it. Boy, exciting. Looks like it's behaving now. I'm going to retract it now. Wow, that's exciting. Well, it looks sort of like what it's supposed to look like, I think. <laughs> you know what? I don't know what it's supposed to look like, honestly. So, uh, but it looks stirred. <laughs> it looks stirred up to me. <laughs> All right, so uh, is it warm? Yeah, a teeny bit. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get back on our. Uh, fortunately, I zeroed everything here, so let's get back on our weld joint and let's see see what we can do there. <laughs> All right, all right. Let me get ready to go. We'll we'll do the actual weld. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Let's uh, see what we can stir up here. I'm not going to get too excited until we get past that part that I uh, that I screwed up before. It's actually kind of filling in behind it, which is kind of exciting. Ooh, man. Boy, the forces are pretty high on this, let me tell you. There 
everything's moving around. I don't know if it's supposed to be peeling a thing off like that ahead of it. I don't know. Probably not, but it does look like it's stuck together. Oh, it's warm. It's probably not a uh, a textbook uh, friction stir weld, but let's uh, let's pop it loose and see what we got. Let's see, the, see if this thing's got any strength to it. I'm, I'm curious. It looks awful, but uh, this tool uh, actually got pretty warm. Um, there's actually even some discoloration on the uh, on the tool. I don't see anything exciting on the back. Well, oh shit. <laughs> well, that's, uh, I wouldn't have guessed that looking at it. I mean, that's an awful looking well, but uh, I don't know, maybe it, uh, let's see, I can't break that with my hands. Hmm. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. It's pretty strong. So, I don't know, I'd say we got uh, more than ha half the material penetration there. And, um, that's pretty, that's pretty bizarre. Look at that. You can kind of see it. It looks like, uh, I don't know, cut his cheese in there or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, I wonder if I had the uh, the right uh, thickness material, uh, uh, you know, for this particular tool, uh, how it would behave for a full penetration weld. I don't know. I'll have to get some uh, 1 16th material. There you can kind of see it. So... You're probably not supposed to get this little, this crud on the top, is my guess, if you do it properly, or maybe you are, I don't know, because it seems like that would thin the material uh, somewhat, and uh, you wouldn't want that. But uh, I'll tell you, the forces are quite high, or it seems to be quite high, and I'll have to talk to uh, um, Rolo Tomasi here and, uh, and see what he has to say about uh, about my little demonstration here. So I totally don't know what I'm doing here, just a <laughs> full disclosure here, right? I don't know what I'm doing with friction stir welding, sorry. Um, it, it's an experiment and uh, I'm having fun. So uh, anyway, hope you guys liked it and thanks for watching. If you like this kind of crazy stuff, uh, throw a comment up and don't forget to click the subscribe button if you like it.